everyone. Can you believe it? We are in the Mennonite World Conference in Indonesia. We're going to be starting in a few hours. There's around 1,200 people from all over around the world. We're all Anabaptists and we're going to celebrate. And we have some people here serving. So we're pretty excited about that. And anyway, uh, come on and we'll uh, have some fun. But first, I'm just going to tell you a little bit about how we got here and then we'll start. So as Gary Jansen and I were traveling on the way to the airport, we were wondering how many people are actually going to be at this conference. Given the, the factor of these airlines shutting down without warning, um, luggage being lost, and then plus if anyone caught COVID on the way to the conference, you would be stuck in an airport, in a motel, you'd miss the entire conference, you spent all this time traveling. And just you could see when, as you saw in the pictures earlier, just how committed everyone was to all these brave people that came to the conference, given the risks, there were real risks here, and they all came, so that was really Okay, just here on a layover in Japan, thought I'd just use the washroom here, just open the door, and this is like a really complicated, and I'm not exactly sure I should do so I think I'm just gonna leave so from Tokyo we flew all the way to Jakarta stayed overnight there then in Jakarta we flew to Samarang in Samarang we were able to spend a little bit of time watch the sunset and then we drove from Samarang all the way to Salatiga and then we arrived at the Simli Hey, can you believe it? We're in Indonesia. We are at the Mennonite World Conference. It's so good to be here. Uh, people are just arriving. It's just the beginning. Uh, it's COVID, so we have to be in, I think, four different venues. Uh, there's uh, 1,250 people here, I believe. And uh, yeah, they're welcome here, and it's pretty exciting. Guess what? I just saw Tim Getter and I'm gonna go over there and say hi to him and just, you know, he used to be a teacher of mine actually and he's and he is the main speaker for tonight. So that's pretty amazing. So uh, you know, teachers, students, they never forget each other and they always have time to talk to each other. So I'm just gonna bug him, see if he has time. <laughs> hey everyone, I just wanna say we just go ahead, you need to go? Go ahead. I do. Yeah, okay, we'll see you. <laughs> okay, bye. So after the Indonesian dancers, we had this worship team from Jakarta and they were amazing and they led us in worship and so encouraging. And then we had a big banner celebration where all the churches from across the world, all the Mennonite churches, and gathered together and they showed off their banners and we all cheered. It was a great time. It kind of felt like, you know, when you're at the Olympics and they have these people um, with the flags of their country. Well, this felt the same way. It was really fun. And then of course we had some more Indonesian dancing. And then the Mennonite brass all had their say. And then Tim Getter spoke about the women and the gospel of Mark chapter seven, where Jesus comes upon this Canaanite woman who wanted her daughter to be healed. And in our translation, it actually insinuates that Jesus calls her a dog, which is kind of strange when you hear that. This is our hero, Jesus. But Tim says that in the Greek, a better translation is Jesus saying, calling her puppies. Like she's like a puppy. Jesus calls her puppy in the same way we call our kids kids, which is a baby goat. So what is key to remember is that when we read dog in our translation, the Jesus calling this woman a dog, and we're reading it from our cultural lens and understanding it from our cultural understanding of dogs, whereas Jesus didn't mean that at all and if there's one thing that we're learning here I'm learning here is that 
so often I'm talking to people and they're saying one thing and I'm hearing another. It's important just to really, really listen to each other and, and ask questions and, and communicate and do the hard work of, of listening to each other intently and, and, and really understanding. There's so many ways that we could lose, un misunderstand even what God is saying in our lives if we don't check back with Him and say, hey, I heard dogs, but what did you really mean? And Jesus would say, oh, no, I meant puppies, like a kids, like goat kids are your kids. So. Okay, I have to tell you this interesting story. The day before the opening ceremonies, uh, we visited this temple called Borobudur Temple. Borobudur Temple is the largest Buddhist temple in the world. It's in a UNESCO World Heritage Site. When we arrived in the parking lot, we had to run the gamut of all the people wanting to sell us things. There is this entire city of tents where people tried to sell you things. The tents went on and on and on and when you got inside them it was like a labyrinth and good thing we had our guide or we would be still wandering around there today lost. And speaking of lost, this temple was built in 800 AD. It took a hundred years to build and then they used it for a hundred years. Then surprisingly it got lost for 900 years. Nine hundred years. How could anyone lose something so massive, so important for 900 years? Slowly weeds took over and then bigger plants and then trees and then dirt. Eventually it all got covered and then it disappeared. Losing such precious temples happens even today. The busyness of life, the worries of life, begin to clog the temples of our minds. Soon we neglect cleaning out our temples. We skip common worship. We skip fellowship. Too stressed to find time for meditation, for scripture, for prayer. Eventually, the weeds of our mind take over, and then bigger plants. And soon, we lose the temple of the Holy Spirit. What used to be so precious to us, now become lost. Hebrews 10 says it even better. Remember those early days after you first saw the light? Those were hard times. Kicked around in public, targets of every kind of abuse. Some days it was you, other days your friends. If some friends went to prison, you stuck by them. If some enemies broke in and seized your goods, you let them go with a smile, knowing that they couldn't touch your real treasure. Nothing they did bothered you. Nothing set you back. So don't throw it all away now. You were sure of yourselves then. It's still a sure thing, but you need to stick it out. Staying with God's plan. So you'll be there for the promised completion. <laughs> everyone, here I am with Safari. He's going to tell us a little bit about himself and about his ministry. Hello everyone, I'm Bahati Safari, Congolese living in Malawi. I'm in Malawi since 2008 as a refugee, but God has used us for his glory to use refugee to do mission. I'm living in a community, 52,000 refugees who are living in small place and uh, according to what we are doing, we are doing discipleship, leadership development, trauma healing because many refugees trauma are very high 
and we are focusing on peace and reconciliation. We praise God. We start with one refugee church in, in the Zaleka refugee camp. This church have grown until now we have 77 churches which we plan through one church. We do a disciple to bring another disciple. Disciple to make a disciple, a church to plant a church to one refugee church. Now we have 77 churches planted in Malawi. Hey, we're here with Gerald Dufeld. He is a relationship catalyst for Japan. Every month he preaches at four different churches, well actually five, and then plus he also preaches at his own church in Canada. He's an online pastor. He's an amazing guy and we just want him to greet everyone, but you have to do it in Japanese, okay? Okay, I think I see Desilene Abebe. Uh, a couple days ago I was sitting on the bus because they're always busing everyone around here and I was talking to this person joking around having a lot of fun well it turns out his name is Desilene Bebe and he is the church he is the pastor of the church of Ethiopia uh, Meserete Christus Church and they have a million people in their church if you can believe it anyway I, and also this other part is interesting too so in six years we're going to be meeting in Ethiopia for Mennonite World Conference Assembly and so Desilene is getting ready, getting prepared for all of this. And I asked them, well, if your church is so big, how many people are going to be from Ethiopia alone in the assembly six years from now? And he said, well, probably 100,000 people. <laughs> so from Ethiopia alone, there's going to be 100,000 people coming to our next World Conference. That is, of course, if COVID is um, cleaned up by then. Anyway, uh, let's go talk to him. Yeah. Hi, brothers and sisters in Canada. May God bless you wherever you are. Um, uh, let the blessing of God upon you and your ministry and your family and uh, you may uh, we may see each other sometime and uh, Ethiopia and then uh, the Masarata Christos uh, Church in Ethiopia invite you to come over uh, to celebrate together in uh, 2028 may God bless you all thank you Xavier I'm lucky work at you back and I let you go to church in and it's not true Xavier I'm lucky work at you but who let she has a mint in the front of your chocolate Thank you very much. All right, here I am with Daniel. He's from the United States. He is a surgeon and he's been to six, count them, six Mennonite World Conferences assemblies. And not only that, he knows the real answer to why the Borobudur Temple was lost. According to our guide at the temple, um, soon after the temple was constructed, there were multiple volcanic eruptions and earthquakes that covered the temple and essentially drove people from the area. I think they decided that God was upset at them. And there you have it. Thanks, Daniel. <laughs> so after three hours of worshiping Jesus together, hearing the word of God in our lives, we had to, of course, and off the entire evening with true evangelical faith. Hey everyone, thank you so much for joining us for Mennonite World Conference Assembly in Indonesia. It's been great having you here. I hope you enjoyed yourself. Um, a couple things you can hear in the background, someone is sweeping. Remember to continually sweep the temple of your mind so that the Holy Spirit can feel at home in your life and give you freedom and joy. And secondly, the words of Tim Geddert. Remember that sometimes when we read scripture, sometimes when we hear someone else, brother and sister, we actually don't really understand uh, the what that person is saying. You know when you're sitting at your table and your cute little puppy, your family treasure comes up to you and looks at you and that feeling in your heart that says yeah yeah this is this is awesome I love it that is the exact same feeling that Jesus has for you and God is awesome thank you for joining us have a good time of the rest of the assembly uh, this is the last video so thanks for joining us take care <laughs>